Come on, you little stinker. On today's show... Ah! It's said that fishing can keep you young at heart. Meet three young ladies who are living proof. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, no. That was a rock. No. And big machines build a legacy. We've got the latest on Minnesota's newest state park. Nice. Up, 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 up. Up and over, up and over. Next, meet a family of champions. What's their sport? Well, it involves water, a tree log, and lots of balance. Yep, faster, that's it, there you go. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week takes a look back at an invasive species that also happens to be a tasty appetizer, if you can catch them. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, it's true, you're never too old to enjoy catching a fish. So with that lesson in mind, we hopped on board a boat up on Lake of the Woods full of ladies who are, well, I cannot say how old. Fishing, it said, tends to keep you young at heart. Should I carry something, girls? No, you're you're the celebrity. Yeah, I'm gonna... If so, here's a boatload of proof. Hit them hard, huh? Hit them hard. Meet these young of heart anglers. Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh no! It was a it was a Audrey T C. It was a rock. No. Really? Well, it's gone. She's only 91. Fishy, fishy in the brook, come and bite on Mama's hook. Is that what it is? That's Petey Litvin. <laughs> She's 76. It's not too big, but I didn't get skunked. <laughs> Can't even justify that. <laughs> oh, he's back. That's Wanda Turney. Ah. Her nickname is Shorty. Come on, you little stinker. She's 81. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss it? That's why they well, call it fishing and that's it's catching. That's two, yeah. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm very blessed with health. I mean, if I didn't have my health, I, and energy. I have a lot of energy also for 90, almost 91. <laughs> that was all that was important to me. I burped. Well, good for you, that <laughs> makes you human. <laughs> I feel better. This also is not an ARP adventure. I was letting it down and he hit it. Or a boating trip for silver sneakers. I mean, this is not funny. It is a little. <laughs> I just can't feel I have never missed that many fish in my whole life. These lady anglers are serious about fishing. <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> Laugh at me, you stinkers. <laughs> and competitive, too. Oh, right. got the first walleye. Uh, kind of. I won. <laughs> What'd you win? I don't know yet, but I won. <laughs> Fishing Lake of the Woods is a tradition for this trio. This is the sixth year. We missed one year because, I don't know, nobody else could come and I didn't want to come alone. I can't think of any place I'd rather be, so. Did you hear that fish? We need you to come up to the cooler. <laughs> hmm, the walleyes must have been listening. There you go, Shorty. Finally. You just switch the colors, that helps. She yep. just goes for the big ones. Well, yeah, anybody can catch She's probably ones. got a huge one. Oh, my God. It's typical of Shorty. She always gets the big ones. <laughs> oh, is that ever a nice one? Oh, finally. I thought I was going to start crying here for a minute. I thought you were too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beauty. You're close together with it. Absolutely, because we caught it. A few fish later, the fishing ladies have a fishy lunch of fresh caught walleye or sauger. That's 
pretty good sized sauger. It's Very. a nice sauger for Lake of the Woods. Yeah. yeah. Plus, uh, well, uh, a, a beer or two. Golden, golden good, golden good. <laughs> Someone once said there are only two kinds of anglers, one who fishes for sport, the other who fishes for fish. But today, on Lake of the Woods, there's a third kind. Oh, I'm not gonna get into the table, it's too much work. <laughs> Those who go fishing together. I wouldn't trade coming with the girls for anything though to stay forever young. <laughs> yeah, I said Audrey made it to 90, and they said, well, good for her. And I now don't need a fishing license. Next up, there's a lot of work that goes into building a state park. Tag along as we explore Minnesota's newest. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Kingtail Gator, Borderview Lodge, Jesse Treble's Safe Basements of Minnesota, and by Evan Root, the official outboard motor of Minnesota Bound. Welcome back. If you're a fan of Minnesota State Parks, how about this challenge? What's happening at Minnesota's newest state park? Well, Bill Shirk went there and filed this story. Dream big and move mountains. Up in northern Minnesota, the bulldozers are already hard at work. Well, this is a very exciting time for Lake Vermilion Sudan Underground Mine State Park. We're really excited to be uh, standing right now in the newest campground of Minnesota, the Minnesota State Park system. Krista Maxwell carries a heavy load. She's project manager on Minnesota's first new state park in 30 plus years. The land was purchased in 2010 from U.S. Steel. And since that time, we have been studying the site uh, for natural and cultural resources, looking at all angles of development. Lake Vermilion Sudan Underground Mine State Park sits on 10 miles of pristine Lake Vermilion shoreline. The project joins 3,000 U.S. steel acres with the already developed Sudan Mine Park site, Minnesota's oldest and deepest mine. The idea? Create a new state park with trails, camping, and fantastic water access. It'll be High tech too, with Wi-Fi access all over the park. This is going to be uh, the next generation park where uh, the facilities are thinking about uh, resources and uh, moving forward with energy savings and uh, different technology. For now, the new site remains in build mode. The diggers continue to build roads and trails. Really, the infrastructure of what will become the 4,000 acre park. You know, this was all raw land up until really a few months ago. And so what we're needing to do is to provide a water treatment facility to get electric in here and fiber conduit so that the park can be Wi-Fi connected. Rangers hope to open the first campsite sometime around the start of 2017. When the campground opens, there'll be 34 campsites as well as three group camps uh, that'll be able to host large groups. And so if you can imagine uh, businesses in town, just how much of an impact that has on the local economy. A thought not lost on locals. I've been there a couple of times. I think it's gonna be beautiful. It's supposed to be kind of state of the art. I think it's gonna be a real plus for the whole state. Linda D. Casmiro owns the local coffee shop. She knows what's coming. A lot of people, a lot of foot traffic, um, car traffic. I think I read like it's supposed to be about 200,000 people a year. Actually, estimates are closer to a quarter of a million visitors every year. Folks like Scott Swanson, he's visiting oh. from LA. Oh, I know that there's been a big investment in the park and that it's expecting to be bringing in a lot of people. I think that's good, you know, I feel like uh, it'll be good for the economy here. But you always kind of like uh, pulls on your heartstrings to make sure that it always maintains that small town kind of feel. For now, 
a few hiking and biking trails sit open. Lake Vermilion boaters can also access the new Armstrong Bay day use area, a dream park born of clean water, untapped land, and a legacy unique to Minnesota. Eventually this will be a, a great place for people to come and stay as well as play. Coming up, it's a serious family business that involves lots of serious balance. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Art, premier manufacturers of maintenance free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. Now we've all seen log rolling, but how many of you have tried it? Well, there's a couple of young ladies who decided to offer lessons on log rolling. Laura Shera signed up. Nice. Up, 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 up and over, up and over. Sometimes life is better when you just roll with it. Roll a log, that is. Nice. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. Pass feet. Pick your feet up, pick your feet up. There you go. Nice. Yep, that's it. Abby Heschler and her sister Lizzie were taught this life lesson at a very young age. Yep, faster. That's it. There you go. Little steps, little steps, little steps. <laughs> I think I probably started log rolling as soon as I could walk and swim at the same time. Push the little amp. Well, I grew up in a family of world champion log rollers. My mom is a seven-time world log rolling champion. She not only passed on her love of log rolling, but also her love of teaching log rolling to me and sharing it with others. Woo! And I won my first world championships as, as a five-year-old in six and under. <laughs> So what do two log rolling sisters do with their unusual up, 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 skills? Up, up and over, up and over. Even as a young kid in high school, and I, I loved teaching my friends. I started a program through the Park and Rec Board. Up, up, up and over, up and over. Nice recovery. Good job. Log rolling was a sport people really loved, but they didn't have access to it because of the equipment. Today, log rolling is considered a sport, but there was a time when log rolling was a workplace skill. It's actually originated from men driving logs to sawmill towns, and they, when they'd step on the floating logs, they spawn, and they had to learn how to stay out of the ice cold water. It was survival for them. Nothing has really changed. It's really a very pure, authentic sport. People have gotten better at it, and now the equipment, which is going to be able to spread this sport all over the world. Not much has changed. Nice. However, the equipment is a little heavy. A 500-pound cedar log. So the ladies invented their own training tool. So the key log is a 65-pound uh, synthetic log rolling log that you fill with water. And then you just slide on these trainers. So now with the trainers, they can actually stay on long enough to learn, get kind of the balance, get their muscle memory down, start to build their footwork. Nice. Really create a progression to learning and they're learning so much faster. Okay, let's see how fast I can learn or how fast I don't learn. That as a beginner, your goal isn't to make the log spin, it's to stay on top <laughs> by taking small little fast steps and stay right up on top and almost keep the log from spinning. You're trying to keep it under your control. <laughs> Look, I think I've got it down. <laughs> there you go. That's fine. Just get, yeah, just get used to that. Look at the logs moving so fast, you can't even <laughs> see it moving. Fast feet are happy feet, hence the sport of log rolling keeps growing. Nice, there you go, that's good. Log rolling feels kind of risky at first and feels like a challenge, but it's still safe and you're doing it with a group of people and you're just right here on the beach. So it's super easy, you can just step right into the water and hop on the log. Nice, dig your heel in, Abby, dig your heel in. And when you're having fun, you let the good times roll. So I think everyone loves this challenge and it's, it's really fun to see that so many different types of people are learning how to log roll. Get control of the log, get control. Steady your core, Allison. There you go, yep. All right, Minneapolis Log Rolling Championship, here I come. Whoa, might be in 2025, but I'll get there. We can catch 
600 pounds on a trap check. Still ahead, our Minnesota Bound Classic heads under the water to feature rusty crayfish. Yes, an invasive species. But did you know? A very tasty one. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Connecticut. Ellsworth Creamery. And by Totem Resorts. While zebra mussels, an invasive species, seems to make all the news, it should tell us that there are other lakes that have had invasive species for a long, long time. We found one in Woman Lake, the rusty crayfish. In search of Minnesota's monster of the lake. To find it, you ready your scuba gear and prepare to dive to the gloomy depths. Did somebody say lake monster? This is the rusty crayfish. It may not be a monster, but it is an alien creature that is spreading, largely unseen, in many of Minnesota's lakes and rivers. They're big, they're destructive, and they're thick. It's gonna be another pretty good trap. This one's here, got about 15, 18 pounds in it. And they're all pretty good size. Dan Crone and his partner, Gene Carlson, have a DNR license to trap rusty crayfish out of Minnesota's Woman Lake chain, a chain that also connects to Leech Lake and Leech to the Mississippi River. We can catch easily with uh, 45 traps in the lake. We can catch 600 pounds on a trap check. You go back in the afternoon, there's just as many in there as there were in the morning. The hardest part about it is finding a market to uh, sell them. Turns out lake monsters also are tasty. The claws have got a lot of meat in them, uh, the tails. You boil them in uh, salt water and uh, use some Cajun seasoning. Some people like them just in the plain salt water. While eating crayfish tails is popular in Cajun country, Minnesotans have been slow to develop a taste. They're starting to take on, but it's, it's slow convincing people that they're, uh, they're good to eat. However, the alien crayfish has not been good for Minnesota. Exotic species experts say the alien crayfish destroys native crayfish. All the crayfish we've caught out here, I myself personally have never saw Marcellus or, or Blue Claw in the uh, traps. They're all the Rusties. So they've pretty much uh, replaced the native species that, that were native to the lake. Rusty crayfish also may reduce certain fish populations, studies show. In addition, the Rusty, with its big claws, will cut down valuable aquatic vegetation. I've been on the lake, oh, probably 20 years now, and I've noticed through those years that the weed beds on the main lake here have been continually disappearing. And right now, you're hard pressed to find a cabbage weed out here. From what I understand, the, uh, the rusty crayfish are, are responsible for that. At the moment, DNR officials say there are no effective ways to control or eliminate the rusty once it's established in a lake system. It kind of upsets the whole natural balance of things that, you know, were intended to be here by introducing exotic species. Maybe the lesson is this. Our ability to upset nature has finally reached the bottom. There's lots of downside to rusty crayfish in the lake, but the upside is, if you're into eating crayfish, rusties are delicious. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce the kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Chera, and always the star of the show, you're listening, is Raven. Yes, you are the star of the show, for sure. Transportation provided by 
Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.